Changing a person's fate's no easy task, especially when their fate is death. The scene at the other end of the line's pretty much what I expected. All except for one thing. No! Lynn! Hang in there, baby! Looks like some piece of trash shot her from the top of the pile of garbage outside. Yeah, let me take a look at her. Maybe there's something I... Sorry, can't allow that, Pigeon Man. I investigate, and you superintend. You have your job, I have mine. Let's leave each to his own profession, shall we? Yeah, well, here's what I think. How much of a pro can you be if you let her get shot right in front of you? I... Anyway, have it your way. I'll stay out of your hair. So, he keeps the key? I'm just gonna hope that it's in the bird's talons. Never opens a door without seeing what's going on, on the other side first, or hearing. Doc, what took you so long? Quit dragging your feet. Who are you to shout at me? Now, let me have a look at the victim. I haven't even looked yet, but I can tell you she's dead. Her second death of the night, actually. The main thing right now is to swivel it. Woo! I mean, if they didn't notice that lamp earlier moving around our lampy friend, they're not gonna notice this. How about it, Doc? Can you save her? She's not breathing. Afraid I'm not a miracle worker. Only thing we can do now is curse the aim of the one who shot her. Lynn, how could I let this happen to you? Yeah, I imagine you're in a whole bunch of emotional turmoil. From which I I'm gonna prevent it from even happening. Unconscious this time as well, huh? Oh, that's why she didn't remember. Where am I? She's coming too. What happened to me? Excuse me? Are you ignoring me? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm still not used to talking with dead people, you see. Dead? So I'm dead, huh? Hmm. Try as I might, I can't seem to remember who I am. She's starting to remind me of me. Who am I? Everybody seems to call you Lynn, if that's any help. Lynn, huh? Pretty cute name. What if that's her surname or her given name? I mean, her name could be like Lynn Jones or Jonesy Lynn. And apparently you're a detective too. Detective? You mean that super cool kind of cop that solves crimes and upholds justice? Yeah, it sounds like a pretty subjective description, but yes, that kind of detective. Hey, wait a minute. Are you starting to remember something? There's no time to lose! Something really unusual is going down in this town tonight. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't argue with the really unusual part. That's not your face, you know. Take another look. You're the dead one. Oh, right, of course. It'd be pretty hilarious, you know, heinous if I looked like this, I guess, wouldn't it? I don't know if heinous is the right word. There! Now this is more like it! Something really unusual is going on in this town tonight. Could it have anything to do with my death, I wonder? Tell me, what is going on in this town tonight? Don't ask me. Huh? I can't remember a thing. I think it's probably because I'm dead. Everything is so confusing! Can't you do something? 
Hey, you're asking the wrong guy. But I've got some things to ask you about. Hmm. I think me is is Sissel's priority right now. I'm looking for the answers to the questions. Who am I and why was I killed? Do you know anything that might help me? The only thing I know right now is that my name is Sissel. Your name is Sissel, huh? I think so. It rings some kind of bell anyway. I think I was killed tonight while I was meeting with you. So you must at least know me, I think. I was meeting with you? Yes, in the junkyard outside. Yeah, it's coming back to me. I remember now. I knew it. I knew you were the lead I needed. But I'm so sorry. I don't think I can help you. W why not? Because I don't know you. W what do you mean? I thought you said you remembered me. No, I said I remembered something. I remembered the fact that I don't know you. No way! So you don't know me, huh? Nope. Wish I did. So do you suppose we're just two strangers who happen to meet tonight? No way. I don't think it was any accident. Why in the world would I be way out here in the middle of nowhere for no reason? I was asked to come here tonight. Asked to come? By who? Can't you kind of guess where this is going? You're kidding! You mean... Bingo! By you! I asked you to come here! But why? That's what I was going to ask you! Why did you ask me to come here tonight? Why out here in the middle of nowhere? You gotta be kidding me. Goes without saying that I don't remember. Grr! Everything is so confusing! Can't you do something? Mmm. So, I died, huh? Yes, apparently. I'm very sorry. How could this have happened? And after I just passed my test finally this year? My exciting career of catching the bad guys had just begun. And now look at me! Why did I have to go and die in an old junkyard like this? Poor kid. The shock is setting in. And so I told her everything that happened tonight. About ghost tricks, possessing and manipulating objects, and about going back four minutes before a person's death. This actually isn't the first time you died tonight, you know. You were already shot and killed once before tonight. And... you saved me? That's right. Uh, you don't remember? Hmm... Yes, I think I do remember something like that happening. Vaguely. Yes, I did get shot! by a blue man dressed all in black. I guess that means that even if a death is erased, the memory of it remains. So I died twice already tonight. Wish I knew what to say to her. Guess I'll just have to wait until she recovers a little. Hey, I bet that's some kind of record, don't you think? Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Looks like she's pretty much recovered already. Lynn, I'm not saying you owe me or anything, but I have a favor to ask. What is it? In the next four minutes, you'll probably come back to life. When you do, do you think you could try and find out about me? Before tomorrow morning. Who I am and why I was killed. I'm really sorry. But I can't make any promises. Why not? I don't remember very clearly right now, but I think I was investigating a case tonight. A case that is very, very important to me. So even if I come back to life, I don't think I'll have time to find out anything about you. Well, I expect the case will have something to do with Sissel. I know that's a terrible thing to say to the person who saved my life once already. I'm 
Really, really sorry. I see. That's too bad. But I'm afraid I'm still going to ask you. Ask me what? Ask you to save me. Even though I probably won't be able to help you. I know it's selfish of me. I really apologize. Wow, she's even in tears over this. But I just can't die. Not yet. Not like this. And I don't blame her. I'm investigating something important tonight. I think maybe that might be the reason I was killed. But I still want to solve the case in spite of all that. Am I out of line? Didn't I tell you a minute ago you don't owe me? Huh? I'm certainly not going to treat your life like some kind of bargaining chip. I'll save you. What you do after that's up to you. Thank you. So, uh, you ready to go back? Back to four minutes before you got shot. Lin's second death. I'm heading back in time now to rewrite her fate. Faced with those circumstances, she could have just lied and promised to help me, but she didn't. That's when I knew I could trust her. Well, we have an ally now. A bit better than a dog. I have a bad feeling about this. Yes, sir. Detective, is everything okay? Oh, uh... I was hungry, so I was trying to get something delivered. What? Don't do that! Oh, I'm sorry. You should leave jobs like that to me! Is chicken alright? One chicken dinner. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not feeling very hungry anymore. Oh gosh, I hate chicken. That's not alright with me. I would like to go back to the station for a minute, though. You would? Oh, uh, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Inspector Cabanella is on his way. He'll be here any minute. Evening, patrol man. Good evening, Inspector Chabanella, sir. Nice work. Now, do me a favor and take a little patrol around outside, would you? That's a nice fellow. Yes, sir. Yo, how's it going, baby? Inspector Cabanella, what are you doing here? I thought the Special Investigation Unit had an important top-secret assignment tonight. What does that matter at a time like this, when my Lin's in crisis? I appreciate it, sir. Wait a minute! Did you just say... crisis? Don't tell me I'm being suspected! Suspected of shooting that pointy-haired man in the red suit! I mean, I've never met the guy before! Hmm... Never, baby? Oh, well, uh... Before tonight, I mean. He asked me to meet him here. He said he had important information about the big case I'm working on. He's the one who contacted me! I see, I see! But it's funny, isn't it? I took a look at that list of cases your station's handling right now, and I didn't see you listed as involved on any big cases. You know I don't suspect you, baby. Just trying to clear things up. You're not the type to ever shoot anybody. Hey, who knows you better than me, baby? You know, if anything ever happened to you... I'd never be able to look him in the eye again. Inspector Cabanella, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah? What's that? 
And I want you to answer honestly. Is it tonight? Is that when it's happening? I have no idea what you're talking about, baby. Get down! It seems to me that Baby is indeed under suspicion. By Inspector Cabanella? No, he's not like that. Just for the record, did you shoot me? Me? I'd never do anything like that. Anyway, looks like the hitman fired from outside. It'd be hard to prevent the bullet from coming in, though. In any case, let's just give it a try. Our four-minute game. Instead of stopping the bullet, we should get her out of the way. Let's see, here she is with a chicken. We have a motor. There's a room down here with a fan in it. There's somebody in the room. Not sure who that might be. But in any case, that's not our concern right now. Well, can't, not much we can do here until we move this thing. We can have a microscope, and we have photos. Well, what are the- what's- let's take a look at it. What could this be? Looks like a giant nail clipper. You've never seen a micro- Well, I guess, actually, he doesn't remember pistols too clearly, so he probably wouldn't remember a microscope either. You think so? Do you know what it is? Uh, why did you have to ask me? Couldn't you see I was looking away evasively? Huh? It's one of those sciencey things that scientists use. Ordinary people like us don't have to know what it is. I don't remember what science is. Yeah, it's no surprise he doesn't remember microscopes then. And I'm gonna give Lynn benefit of the doubt here that she just, it's because of her amnesia too, because otherwise she's, what kind of idiot doesn't know what a microscope is? Anyway. But it's apparently something Lynn doesn't like very much. Well, that's because she's ignorant. No, I didn't mean to do that. All right. What about this? Looks like photos of rocks. These pictures are old. What are they of? Little fragments of rock? And the fragments are glowing. Uh, do you know what these are? Sorry, but I lost my memory. Probably not the best person to ask. That's okay. I was only being polite. I didn't really think you'd know. Ouch. This lady's tongue can be sharp. Almost as sharp as your hair. Uh, I can hear what you're thinking, remember? I know. Good one. Ah. Uh, the policeman comes in, Talk. they talk about buying chicken. It's interesting, the distinction between the speech bubble text and the, uh, other text they have here. Hmm. Well, let's try moving this again. I'm not surprised that she's surprised, you know. Hey, don't scare me like that! You could shorten my life! Poor little me. Um, your life's already over, actually. You don't have to rub it in. Okay. Oh, there's a notebook here. Was that- Oh, this is the notebook she was looking at, isn't it? Surreptitiously at that. What's up with this blind and pink notebook? Oh, that's mine. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> uh, why is your adorable notebook not in your pocket? I panicked, okay? Don't you shove things in the bookcase when you panic? Who are you calling, anyway? It was personal business. I really wish you could elaborate a bit on that, but all right, fine. And here she is talking about she wants to go back to the station, and she's not allowed to because she is... Well, I don't know. She says Cabanella wouldn't hold her as a suspect, but I wouldn't be surprised at all. Why can't we go into the oven or something? Or get to that book up there? Well, can we do anything with the fan? Wait, ball? 
Oh, there's a ball on top of the ceiling fan for some reason. Well, we'll worry. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. That room might not even be relevant to this, except of course it is. Yeah, Lin, it's much better to have a full-blown human on your side than just some random... Well... Oh, I see what we need to do. We need to go over to where she is. In any case, it's definitely better to have a, uh, human on your side than a dog. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was one spunky... er... Uh, I keep trying not to use that word. It's a Pomer- he's a good Pomeranian, that Pomeranian was. But... It's not the same as having a human on your side, you know? So frustrating. We're ticking closer every second, and so far, not a lick of progress. There's Cabanella. You know, I thought he had a beard, and he does, but his chin is just that pointy. It's almost like Waluigi level chin action going on here. Of course, this guy. Well, I don't know, he's. Waluigi's actually a pretty good dancer. Wonder if Sissel liked Mario when he was alive. Alright, here's what I think we need to do now. We have to get over there. If only they could move that lamp or something, we could make... I don't know, some kind of progress. And now they're going to be talking to each other, and, you know, about... She's afraid she's a suspect. Oh, jeez, I just feel so powerless. This is nothing like before, when the dog was dead. It's a much stronger sense of... ...of powerlessness. Every second counts, and there was Cabanella just like... ...you know, moving his legs around like that. And he claims he doesn't suspect her. I don't know, Cabanella seems pretty sketchy to me. I wouldn't think a man who was corrupt would get quite this high in the administration of the police department, but then again, how else is he getting up so quickly? Especially given his, uh, quirks. Gosh, what can we do? Well, not so much, I see. I think it might be time to just start this over, honestly. I, I don't know what I'd do. Would I just have to move the foot ladder when they're both facing it and they'll be startled and they'll go over to see what was going on? I mean, I can't think of anything else. You know what? I have an idea. The guy who shot me is outside, right? Looks that way, yeah. Instead of trying to stop the bullet once it gets in here... Well, see, I'm apparently as smart as a detective. A rookie detective, but still. Wouldn't it be more fun to... Oh, that's not what I was thinking. Fun, she says, with eyes gleaming. Oh boy. You can use the telephone to move around, right? That's right. And I know the telephone number to the junkyard payphone, too. I don't want to get shot again. You know what they say? About three strikes and you're out. Or exactly three, you mean. As long as you don't become a ball player, you'll probably be safe. But the telephone thing's a good idea. Maybe I'll give it a try. Okay, how do we get to the telephone, now? Um... If only I could. Oh, I know when I'll do it. I'll do it when she's putting the diary back. Oh, 
Darn it, I can't ghost right now. I thought I had my solution. But it just goes to show how wrong I was. Hmm. How can we get into that phone? We can't start this motor, and we can't do anything with the ball, can we? So this whole lower area is basically completely of no concern to us right now. We need to get to the phone. It's so obvious, I didn't even think about trying to stop the killer. I just thought about stopping this bullet from killing her. Ah, oh, jeez. Does this do anything? So it does. Maybe? Hmm. Why isn't the policeman surprised? You'd think he would be. I mean, this thing is just moving around and he's not, he's not even saying a word. Oh, so now he's talking to himself. Or maybe thinking to himself, I guess I should say. They told me to call the detective outside if she did anything suspicious. So here I stand. Hey, maybe I need to call the detective outside after all. She's so beautiful, it's criminal. Ah, oh, real Casanova. Hmm. Say, did you hear what the officer just said? Yeah. Strange taste that fellow has. His taste is perfectly normal. <laughs> but anyway, not that part. The part about the order he got. The order to telephone outside if I did anything suspicious. Telephone, huh? I was acting really suspicious a few minutes ago, but he didn't call. He should have been more observant! So... If the police officer sees anything suspicious, this state of affairs might change. Well, we can't do anything with the notebook, so I guess we'll move this. See, this is some progress now. We just have to do suspicious things, or make her do them. But how? We, can, we can't interact with anything but the stepladder. Darn, we already missed our chance. It's already too late, isn't it? Huh. <sighs> I'm, of course this situation isn't impossible. No situation is hopeless if we act uh, the way we should. The question is, how should we act here? And so he has the cop go out. She goes to talk to him. To our favorite 70s inspector. I mean, maybe he's just genuinely good at his job. That's a perfectly reasonable explanation for... How he's doing all this, isn't it? Well, Cecil, why can't you just move the stepladder over to the phone? It would save us so much time here, Cecil. Oh, Cecil. Gosh. There's someone downstairs. I guess it's that doctor, isn't it? But the doctor didn't come up here. Or not the doctor, the foreman. Or the... Super... Superintendent, I mean. But the issue is, he's not going to come up here until after she's dead, so there's nothing we can do with him. Wait, what? Here we go. That's funny. What's the matter? This telephone doesn't seem to be working right now. Usually the phone line glows red, but it's dark right now. What? Apparently... In this four minutes before death world, we can't just use the phone lines whenever we want. You're kidding, right? As long as the lines are closed like this, it looks like we can't go anywhere. But I want to stop that criminal. 
darn. Well, what can we do here? You're not gonna say anything about that? How strange. Did you see Inspector Cabanella? Yeah, I'd say it was pretty darn strange indeed. No, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about my notebook. Notebook? We lit it up for him plain as day, but nothing. It's not like Inspector Cabanella not to notice something. Well, he's a weird guy, what can I say? That's all you're going to focus on, isn't it? Well, it turns out we can get to the lamp, so... Could we have... We could have gotten to the lamp all along? Darn! How was I not able to get to the lamp? Well, in any case, I think we have our solution now. She'll see the, the lamp swivel around and shine on the uh, notebook. And that should get the attention of the cop who's sent in, shouldn't it? I mean, I sure hope so. Unless we're in one of those, like, you know, it's like a Charlie Chaplin thing, and the cop's chasing around the tramp. That's right, sulk off, and... or mock sulk off, I guess. at his nose! Is he a bird? Hello, the chicken kitchen. You want chicken? We got your chicken. I uh, want chicken dinner, please. Would you like an order of fried chicken with that? Oh, that's okay. Why in the... What possible reason is there to go there? Oh, huh, let's go. I'm just grasping at straws at this point anyway. So we can occasionally use the phone lines in this world. I mean, I'm not sure why we would, but... <laughs> Hello? Uh, where would you like that delivered? They hung up. Oh, he's a baritone. Well, um, I'm not going to try and sing. He's so devoted to being a chicken killer that he wears a chicken beak. It's rather savage, isn't it? He's like wearing the, uh, you know, he, he, he wears the body parts of his slain victims. Oh, here we go. If, maybe if the chicken dinner shows up. We just popped over here while we had the chance without much thought. But this isn't where the hitman who's trying to kill me is. Clearly. We probably ought to hurry back. Well, yeah, without much thought is the key word here, I have to say. Hmm, that's funny. What's the matter? Oh, darn. We're stuck! Apparently in this four minutes before death world, we can only use the lines while the telephone is being used to make a call. You're kidding, right? As long as the lines are closed like this, it looks like we can't go anywhere. Guess we'll have to start over. Well, that was a really, really stupid idea I had, I have to admit. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking. From now on, no more nonsense. I gotta focus on, on my missions here. We gotta stay focused. Yeah, we can't see the Birdman in the basement. I had a teacher once of the folks called Birdman because he loved to come in and just talk about birds. Supposedly, I don't, I never saw it happen, but everybody called him the Birdman. What can I say? He loved birds. I do remember a few times he showed us videos of just birds 
doing bird stuff. Uh, I, I, maybe I shouldn't be talking about that now. I mean, there's a life to save, but yeah, you know, we'll save her. I'm not prepared to accept that there's any time where I will be unable to save her, you see. I just need to wait for him to turn around and maybe get his attention focused on the journal. We need him to call down to the junkyard. Huh? That's Lynn's notebook. Hey, wait a minute. I thought she was practicing a dance move when I came in. Nope. That was definitely suspicious, no question. What a simpleton. I'd better report this. I wonder if I can make the call without her noticing. Okay, you better believe it's trick time. Well, we made it now. What's up? I've been watching Lynn just like you told me to, and I noticed something suspicious. You did? So Inspector Cabanella was right. She was hiding her notebook when I came in. Her notebook, huh? Yes, sir. In a very suspicious manner, and in a very conspicuous place. Anything else? Uh, let's see. It's pink, and it's a notebook. Anything else? Um, let's see. Come to think of it, she was using the phone when I came in, too, and referring to her notebook. Okay, someone will be over later. Don't let on you noticed anything. Hey, look at that! The phone line's glowing red! I bet it would work if we tried it now. I bet you're right. The detective he's talking to is outside in the junkyard. And that's where the horrible hitman who's after me is, too. Yeah, he's here. That hitman is has some real nerve being here with all these cops around. Well, I remember there was a big, like, box hanging from the same tower, or near where the wrecking ball was. We'll kill him with that! I've been waiting for you. Eee! What are you? A desk lamp that sounds like an old grandpa? Just call me Ray. You see, I didn't know he sounded like a grandpa. And I'm sure that probably would have been clear in the original Japanese script because of the distinctive speaking patterns. Grandpa Ray. See, that's probably like... What is it? What is it? Ray OG son? I forget. It's been a... Well, no, it is. That's, that is what it is. It's easy to confuse with uncle, though. You just have to get the grandpa part in there somewhere, don't you? We're souls. We can choose any appearance we like. Which means you have no intention of showing us what you really look like, right? Now then, about that gunshot that took your life. I heard it way up on the upper level a scant few minutes from now. Hitman's probably getting his rifle ready right now. Alright, I'm going in. I'll get him with those ghost trick thingies. I'm very sorry, young lady, but you don't have those powers. What? Why not? I'm afraid I don't know the reason. But only a special few have the powers of the dead. What? Are you saying I'm not special? That's not fair! Anyway, we don't have much time. Come on and hop in. But thank you, finally! We really don't have much time, do we? Carry on, boys. Alright. Thank goodness for our friend, the Lamp, huh? I mean, his name is Ray, but... Well, let's fold it. No one noticed. You know, they're not very observant for a bunch of cops, are they? I guess we're gonna get up there the same way we did before, right? Yeah, I guess we are. We got the blender? Yep. Well... 
We got the blender, we got the flag, we got it all good as new. Okay, let's get back up there and go drop a heavy thing on a hitman. I mean, he is always one step ahead is the problem, you know? But we just have to get there before Cabanella does, and he dances everywhere, so he's a little slow. Well, we made it! Now it's time to hunt down that horrible hitman! He must be around here somewhere, preparing to take a shot. There isn't a lot of time. Let's try to find him fast. I'm going to make good and sure he understands. What happens to people who point guns at others? There's a gleam in her eye that's absolutely blinding. But how? She doesn't have an eye anymore. She's dead. Nothing? Darn, we're stuck here for now. Um... Darn! I'm afraid we just missed our chance to get on the bicycle, didn't we? Well... The issue right now is... Wait, hold on, why does he get on a bicycle? It's just a few meters to the... Ah, well, I guess he does some pretty intensive exercising anyway, doesn't he? I mean, after all, let's be honest here. This guy does dance everywhere. That's not something... You know, that takes a lot of calories. He's probably in great shape. Because he, you know, everywhere he walks, he walks dancing. But as Cab once Cabanella gets there, it's basically too late to save her. Now, I'm not saying that he killed her, or because obviously he didn't. And I'm not saying he arranged to have her killed, because we don't have- that's a groundless suspicion at this point. It's really lucky that we can pull off this trick reliably. That's all I can say. Turning this spotlight on and off is basically irrelevant. All right, we just need to wait until the bike is about to, is, you know, passing near this lamp, and then he'll carry us right... Well, he'll probably carry us past the hitman who's hidden somewhere, but... Because that hitman's always one step ahead, after all. Darn. There we go. Hiding right behind the cop's car. I see my target. Time to go to work. I'll be head of the Hitman Division by next month now for sure. There he is! The horrible Hitman! I think his name's actually Tengu, but that doesn't matter now. We have to stop him from shooting. Fast. What are we gonna do? Well, I guess first thing we're gonna do... Well, what can we do here? Yeah, we can't pedal the bike, so... Now as for what good... Oh, I see what good that did us. No! If they don't spot him now... Well, they didn't. There. We put a stop to that shot, at least. We did it! So I'm safe now, right? Well, that changed your fate a little, but it didn't avert it completely. We're not done yet. Hitman's a professional, and he really, really wants to be head of the division, apparently. I doubt blocking a shot here and there is really gonna stop him. If you want to rough him up a little bit, I promise I won't put it in my report. Let's think of something else before he gets a shot in. Okay, we're getting more time now. But where is he? That's our current problem, isn't it? Well, let's just try, um... What happens if we pedal the bicycle? Nothing? About what I'd expect. Now, still nothing we can do to this bicycle. The issue is... So I guess we just have to open this car door. Oh, I see what we need to do. Okay. The 
the all night sticker. I would have probably called it something more like a truncheon. You unobservant idiot! If I want that position, I have to be careful of even the least bit of light. Division head is my ambition for this year. Next year, my motto will be, if I want to be director, I have to be careful of even the least bit of scandal. So it sounds like he won't show up in spots where a light is on. So it ta- there are scandals even in hitmen organizations. I'll be. And next year, I'm going to spread some nasty scandalous rumors about him. you think he'd be worried someone is see him, seeing him, wouldn't you? Oh, look at that! One of the lights went out! There are three lights here all together. Apparently, we can't have all three of them on at once. Our station is crazy cheap when it comes to electricity. Just so another detective could see what he was doing the other day, I had to pedal my bicycle in place to work the headlamp. A very sad tale indeed. Sounds like they're taking things way too far. So they are. Well, okay, here's what we'll do. What does this do, by the way? Huh, nothing happens. That's funny. I thought this lever was for swinging the crane around. The crane around. I thought this lever was for swinging the crane arm around. I'd like to swing that horrible hitman around. Mm hmm, his crane. Wonder if there's some other way we can use it. Maybe I should have turned on this light, huh? Well, if we can only have, uh... A few lights on at once, then... The one I want to have off, then, is that one over by the crane where we could drop the box on him. Ah, uh, but that box isn't here anyway, is it? So here's what we're gonna do. Oh crap, we have to wait for that cop to get back, though, is the problem. Oh, there he is. Still not quite close enough. I always jump the gun on these things. Though maybe I shouldn't be talking about guns given the, you know, the situation. Darn. It's a good thing that time freezes when we go, you know, when we ghost. But. Well. Let's, uh, turn this back on. Next time I'm going to try turning on the siren. If that doesn't get these cops' attention, nothing will. Okay, now we just need to wait for that... Uh, there he is, with his stick. Nope, not quite yet. Here we go. So, what if we wanted to, say, his, you know, temporarily inhabit his shirt or something? I mean, how many guys you think do this stuff? Like, Sissel might have powers that most people don't, but how many dead people do have his abilities? They could be all over the place, even as we speak. Hey, did you turn that flashing light on? It wasn't me. It went off all by itself. It scared the heck out of me. Well, just make sure you lay off it. Don't want to waste any electricity. Things gone that tight? It's pretty sad. They're really putting the squeeze on us lately about using too much power at sites. They won't even let us use all of our searchlights at once. Oh boy. We ought to be free to do at least that much, especially on a dark night like tonight. I see, so it's dark. For, the problem is, I want to go turn the other light off. But if I do that, then the, he's going to have shot her. <sighs> what a problem. Well, we, obviously the important thing for now is stopping him from shoot. Where is he? Oh, that light's still on. I see. Well, I went into the wrong... Wait, where is he? Oh, he's still at the same spot. Well, I see. I'll just wait until both cops are right here. And now... You idiots! You don't see... <laughs> what a bunch of incompetent... Look! One of the lights went out. There are three... Yeah, I know already! Jeez. 
This will get both the cops over here, and we'll have a few seconds to go turn off the other light. I mean, I sure hope so, anyway. He'll be there in a second. See, there he is. You know, think about it. Right now, he's like, man, these lights just keep popping on. What, like, you know, what an inconvenient night for me. He likes being one step ahead. But, uh, oh, this guy... No, he's not one step ahead of us. Not right now, is he? Can we... No, we can't get to that particular light. Dang. Well, let's just be fast about this. So... Now we can... Why couldn't we just pedal the bicycle over to him? Too conspicuous? Hasn't stopped Cecil before. All right, Sissel. Where? He's not there yet. We're gonna have to do this and fast. Wow. No! So close. And he might as well be, like, a mile away. Okay. Can we still get back? No! Well... We've screwed up, boys! Unless... Unless there's a miracle and there's not. Why would we go back to before cha before the fate change? We don't need to do that much. I mean, where is he? He's gonna pop up under here, right? So he is. And this time... Wait, what?! Even if we block his shot, that'd only buy us a little more time. Doesn't look like we can discourage him from shooting completely. The only way to deal with evil is to crush it completely! This lady detective is just a little excessive. What do you mean excessive? He's trying to kill her! Guess I better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. I'm really quite... quite miffed about that ending there. I know exactly what I need to do. We'll do this all in one swift series of motions. It'll be like a symphony orchestra. <laughs> this has been so demoralizing. But I guess that's what it's like being dead. Demoralizing. We'll see it all fall into place now. Yeah, these speech balloons really trim down the scene to its bare essentials, don't they? I'm still not sure why Cabanella didn't notice this, but... Well, those pieces will fall into place when they fall in place, now won't they? And now our policeman here, our guardman, notices the strange things going on with, you know, he... W w these people are such simpletons! He only noticed because some lamp was shining on it! Well, maybe we all actually are this oblivious, and this is just highlighting it. Once you're dead, you do have a pretty good vantage point to appreciate human stupidity after all, don't you? Lynn, I, st I tell you what, if things get much more complicated than this... I, I mean, this is by far the most elaborate save-a-person's-life thing that Cecil has done so far. Or Cecil. You know, I have to- I do want to tell you, Lynn, I think you have great taste choosing a pink notebook. Pink is the best color. Well... For some things. Say, a pink suit doesn't look good, for example, but a lot of pink things do look good. Like your journal. I really do think, they, like, they couldn't have just not have us... They couldn't not have us repeat the same dialogue again. Well, fine. 
You know, if I had known what to do, this would have taken, like, four minutes. <laughs> ah, it just goes to show the power of knowledge. You met him already, Lin! <sighs> but it has to be a careful aim because it's one shot. He kills her with just one swift bullet. Tengo doesn't even realize that his downfall has already been so carefully orchestrated. And now we wait. Right? I mean, that light's on, that light's on, so yes. Now we wait. A professional killer. No, we can't do anything with that. Oh! So we can. Did you hear a scream just now? I'm telling you it wasn't me. Nobody said it was. There. We found a nice dark spot for our gloom-loving hitman. I think your death has just been erased. Again. Yes! Why not, I wonder? Huh? Why don't I have powers like yours? If I could do things like you do, it could really help me pursue my case. Why only the special few, huh? It's not fair. That's the same thing the little doggy said, too. Well, I'm jealous of you, actually. You are? Why? Because your life can be saved, even if you die again tonight. I can save you with my ghost tricks. Nobody can save my life, though. Oh. These powers of the dead. Why have they chosen me? Will I find the answer to that question tonight? Sissel, I'm so sorry. Well, you're free to do as you please now. I guess this is goodbye, Detective. Will we ever see each other again? If you ever want to see me again, all you have to do is die. Okay, got it. I was kidding. Uh, well, guess we'd better be getting back to the present. Lynn has escaped death for a second time. But that doesn't mean she's out of the water yet. I better go see how she's doing. Wait, why isn't that crate dropped? I mean, I guess there's just blood splattered all over the bottom of it now. Wait, hold on. How am I gonna get back over there? Those cops still patrolling? No, they are not. Um... Well, I'll do what I have to, I guess. There's that guitar that saved her life once. Here we go. May maybe, maybe, may, may, maybe. Um, I'll take it. Why can't I reach the bed? Oh, yeah, because I got to it through the flag. Flag to the or it's a cot rather than a bed, I guess. Those are pretty close though. They're very they're definitely related concepts. Ray, you're not gonna you're not gonna no, Ray's not gonna move. Well Nah, eh, we didn't need him to anyway. Well, Looks like congratulations are in order. You erased yet another death. But I haven't gotten any further in solving my own mystery, though. But that woman holds the key. Don't forget that. 
Lynn, huh? Now that she's alive again, she's probably still being detained in the super's office. She won't be able to pursue her case without the freedom to move around. I'd better go back to the super's office and see her. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, here, here's Lynn's apartment. There's that, um, uh, apartment that belonged to the crazy lady who's just having a feud with her husband. There's her husband's place. There's the park with the crazy afro guy. Um, Super's office. I don't know why I'd need to go to the chicken kitchen, but... Well, frankly, at this point, I'm fairly convinced this is Twin Peaks. Everyone in town is crazy. I decided to go back to the office where Lynn was being detained. With her changed fate, her story was sure to change, too. And maybe that would lead us in some new direction. Now that Lynn is alive again, I wonder what she's doing. She said she was investigating an important case tonight. Could that case be connected to me in any way? When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained on suspicion of my murder. But I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate, or they can try to change it. Lynn is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. Fool! Who told you not to let this suspect out of sight? My apologies, sir. But I never th I th thought she'd run away. Lynn is our angel. I mean, friend. I mean, she's like family to us. Angel, friend of family? They all run when they have the chance. Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife ran away? I'm very sorry. I have no idea, sir. Humph. <laughs> You'll never make detective at that rate. Now find Lynn. Yes, sir. If Inspector Cabanella gets word of this, it's all over. I suppose she went to meet her roommate, right? So our red-headed detective escaped, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Phew, she's fast. Well, guess I'll look around for leads. Guess you might have to, huh? Oh, there's a teapot there now. Er, is that... It's just a spout. It's a kettle. Well, I don't really know what good the kettle's gonna do us. Can we do anything here? Still no. Still no. Hmm... No, what we can do is uh, shut the spout lid. I'm surprised they're not going to read her journal. You'd think they'd have some, you know, cause to do that now. Lynn's notebook, sad and forgotten, sits behind the bookshelves. Who could she have been calling on the phone before she hid it there? I wish I could find out. Me too. If only there were some other object- If only that kettle were there before, I think you would have been able to just go to whoever she was talking to back in that flashback, right? Yeah, you would have. Alas, it was not meant to be, I guess. Well, where to next? I can't imagine this place would hold any valuable info. Maybe something is going on with that stake out now? Could be. The entrance to the nearly deserted park. The detective who was ordered by Cabanella to perform a stakeout 
is nowhere to be seen. Maybe he's in the restroom. I wonder if that strange young man followed him in there. Yeah, still not much we can do here, is there? I mean, time is ticking, but I don't think there is. Oh, that's odd, the siren is inside the van. I've never seen that before, though I could easily believe it. This leaflet must be one of those things that crazy guy in the park was giving out. Though crazy's a relative term, isn't it? I'm gonna save. I feel like this would be a good thing to- I mean, I know I just saved, but I still think it'd be a good thing to save, you know? Okay, um, now what? Um, um... Can we get back to her apartment yet? No, line's still broken. Not that I would have expected anything different. Any- er, I guess we could see how they're going here- things are going here. They're probably sending another hitman after her right now. Oh. Well, I don't know what the significance of the troubled man could be. Forget his name already. Um... I suppose he's probably Mr. Red, since his wife is Lady Red. I mean, assuming she went with the standard thing and changed her surname. I, I personally am not the biggest fan of this practice, but... Well, what can I do, huh? Um... Yeah, no, hold on. I, well, obviously there's nothing we can do here, so... Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. I guess we'll just head back to the super's office. I mean, maybe there's something that can be found out there. Or more likely the junkyard. Because that's where the cops are right now. They might have some... They might, they're probably keeping an eye out for Lynn around town now, because she's very suspicious. Unfortunately. Oh, back again? Yeah, just checking to see if anything's new. Well, let me see. A moment ago, your corpse was taken away by the police. It was? Oh. Guess I'll never see my poor corpse again. Nothing's permanent. We lose everything in the end. But there are some things we can get back. Right, Ray? I suppose you're right. Well, if they've, my body's already gone, I don't know how much there is to get here. Um, I don't know, maybe Ray has some other kind of information that could help us. If he did, he probably would have volunteered it already. But I'd say it's worth, you know, going out to ask it all the same. Or not. Well, see you around, Ray. I mean, the dump isn't the best place for a guy to live, but once he's dead, I guess it's not that important. You know, it's not like the germs are gonna get to you. What if the chicken kitchen actually could help us now? No, it couldn't. It couldn't be that. Well, I don't know what this guy's office has to do with anything, but it might have something to do with something. We'll see. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Emma was right. Maybe it was a mistake I was ever born at all. But wait a minute! If I'd never been born, Amelie wouldn't be here right now! Oh, it's gotten to the point where I don't know what my mistakes were. What defines a mistake, anyway? If something isn't right, does that make it a mistake? I'm out of here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I'll give it a second. Yeah, I'm out of here. I don't know what I expected to find there anyway. The issue is, though, the only place left... Well, I guess there might be some kind of lead in the super's office. J. 
just what we're looking for. That old pigeon man. You suppose he's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at all these precision instruments and complicated devices. What are you doing? Sir, I think maybe this is how Lin escaped, through here. She couldn't possibly fit in that tiny little elevator. Oh, I don't know, sir. Lin is pretty slim. Oh, don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion? To this day, I still don't know how much my wife really weighs. I'm very sorry. I had no idea, sir. <laughs> You'll never make detective at that rate. This guy just has the worst luck with talking about people's wives. Anyway, where's that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir? He went through the door behind me, sir. Won't open. Apparently, that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. You'd better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir! Maybe now we can do something with the fan. Nope, we cannot. Hey, what's that guy about to do? Nothing? Well, we can't get onto the club anymore. I could swear I just saw this thing move. Don't tell me! Could it be? It sensed the tension between me and the detective and moved to get away from it? That was an unexpected tangent. I'll never make detective at this rate. What I need is some sort of achievement, a feather in my cap. If only I could find a helpful lead, that might do the trick. Helpful and blindingly obvious lead is staring you in the face right now. Yeah, and he already... Like, he's the same guy we... Who we pointed it out to before, so I guess we just have to make this obvious for him, even though he should not be a detective because he's obviously an idiot. At least he's an observant. There's more to being an idiot than that. Huh? This is Lynn's notebook. If I give this back to her, it might spark something between us. Hmm, what to do, what to do? This is a very complicated matter. What have you got there? Wh what this? Oh, uh, this is, um... Wait a minute. Is that... Yes, sir. It's Lynn's notebook. Notebook, eh? Come to think of it, there was something about that in the report. Something about her looking at her notebook and making a phone call. This must be it. The telephone number with the big circle around it. Aren't you curious to know who she was calling? I am! I really am, sir! I'd like to know! Oh! But I don't have any ulterior motive for wanting to know, though! No, sir! No, sir! This number might be an important lead. I'd better check it out. It'll be that diner. Hello? To whom am I speaking, please? Yes, hello! This is a criminal investigation. We need your cooperation. Hey, I know that voice. Is that you, Detective McCaw? Oh, is that Officer Bailey? What's up, sir? You don't usually call this late. Oh, uh, did you get a call from one of our detectives, uh, Lynn, earlier? From Lynn? Yes, I did. She calls every night. Maybe she senses it's about to happen. Did she say anything special? No, not really. Is something wrong? Yes, well... 
I might be contacting you again if I have any other questions. That's the closest thing we have to a lead right now. I'm going to go file the report down at the station. I need you to be vigilant here. Excuse me, detective, but... What is it? That notebook. Uh, would you mind if I gave... Uh, never mind, sir. Huh. Just stay on your toes. I'm glad he caught himself before he asked that stupid question. But I don't think he's cut out for this line of work. Well, as I said, it's pretty much our only lead, so... To the police station! They have tons of leads there. It's the police station! Well, what was that call all about? Who'd you say, Lynn? I don't really know. If I had to take a guess, though, I'd probably say... Something's going on with her. <laughs> the only place in the world where nothing's going on is inside your brain, Bailey. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, I know what the words mean. That's not what I'm asking. That was my way of expressing indignation, putting it in the form of a question. I just hope Lynn's not doing anything crazy. I'm a fan of hers, you know? According to my log, Lynn has been calling here nearly every night as of late. So, let's see. This is the place Lynn took all that risk to call, eh? But what exactly is this place? Well, it's the police station, right? They said he was an officer. I'm gonna save. Yeah, I can't quite reach that TV thing. Oh wait, I can reach this. Let loose. Why would I do that? Oh, it's a monitor. Not a... what well, is a TV thing. Screen shows rows of tiny rooms. Rooms are really, really small. And you can see right into them from the outside. Suppose the open bars keep the rooms airy, but I wouldn't want to live in one myself. Wonder where these little rooms are. Ah, it's a jail. Not that he quite remembers that, does he? Hey, what's this? Oh, that? I wrote down my duties for the night so I wouldn't forget any of them. You can't keep them in your head? It's not like you'd have a ton of duties after all. Use a little brain power. What are you talking about? Weren't you the one who just said nothing was going on inside my brain? He's like the Andy, except he's irritable. Hmm, didn't think you'd take it in quite that direction. Goblet? Where I come from, we call those wine glasses, but whatever. So, let's see this important to-do list of yours. Nine, take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. Nine, huh? That's usually when Lynn calls. Well, we can't let her talk to him tonight. Rules are rules. Aw, oh, poor Lynn. Sure wish I could comfort her. What do you think you're doing? That's my important duties memo. That's okay, I've got it all memorized for you. Well, it's your duty to guard the telephone room, you know. Just make sure you do your job when the time comes. Mm, okay. Glad I wasn't in the paper anymore. 
Well, we can do something to this switch at least. Let's find out what. Ah! There you go again, fooling around with that thing. He, wait, he fools around with it regularly? What kind of incompetent? Wasn't me. Don't lie. You know you love to see me jump up and prepare for emergency. Oh yeah, sure. Way back when I first got this job. But I've had enough of that now. Besides, you always react exactly the same way. Grrr. The enemy switches. The emergency switch probably just loose. Probably because I fooled around with it too much. Well, it's for emergencies. Don't play with it. Anyway, it wasn't me. Maybe you ought to get it repaired, huh? Well, close it back up. It's making me feel on edge. Ah, too much of a pain. A pain? Proper emergency procedures are a pain to you? What a sad, sad state of affairs. Well, he's kind of a simpleton, but he's also kind of not. They keep a bazooka here? Well, what good does it do us to get back to the phone, though? I mean, it would be nice if we could get to that phone, say. Wait, what? Hello? L lin I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Please let me talk to him. Uh, I'm sorry, detective. I can't do that tonight. You can't? But you always let me talk to him before. Well, uh, the telephone room's already reserved. That's why. Oh, and she sniffs because she's sad. By the way, is something going on with you tonight? What? Why do you ask? I got a call from one of the other detectives a minute ago asking about you. Oh, really? Well, I don't think it's anything important. Officer Bailey? Do you think you could keep this call just between us? Even if only for tonight? Well, I, uh... Oh! Well, I've gotta go. I'll call again tomorrow. Oh boy. Well, I guess I'd better call the detective division. Hold on there, Bailey. What? Don't tell me you're gonna report that call from Lynn. What else can I do? It's my duty. Just write it down on one of your important to-do lists. And then, I can wad it up for you and throw it away. You mean, you want me to keep quiet about it? Well, isn't that what she asked you to, to do? W well yes, but... Tonight's kind of a special case for us. Can't you make a special exception for my Lynn, too? <sighs> special case, huh? All right, you win. What kind of police station keeps a bazooka? What do you have to say, huh, Cecil? Probably something obvious? I don't know what they think is special about tonight. But for me, it's my only night. Lynn's on the other end of that telephone line. I'd better hurry. Yeah. So nothing surprising. So she's probably at that diner, right? It looked like she was somewhere dark, though. Maybe yeah, in a basement somewhere, I guess. Oh, Lynn, we're, we're on our way. Probably to stop another hitman. Lynn! Lynn! Oh, why couldn't it have been me instead? 
I'm no use as a police officer. It should have been me. It looks like she's dead. We better not touch her. Who did this? Who shot Lynn? Hey, excuse me, mister. You talking to me? This room. There aren't any other exits beside this one, are there? Do you see one? Huh? Then how did she... No. We must have one of those mysterious locked room murder cases on our hands. One of those cases where the murderer vanishes into the thin air is it like a, in a vacuum. Look, just go find a real detective. I'll keep watch here. Yes, sir. What a terrible turn of events. So now a locked room murder, huh? Things never get dull for our redhead. I know of a certain inspector who might dance around at the thought of a mystery. But no mysteries for me. Not when I can rewind time and talk to the victim herself. Guess it's time to go back and see the truth behind this murder with my own eyes. You know, normally this would be very sad, but... Well, I hope Lynn gets out of this. I, th I, I trust her. <laughs> I died again! I thought you'd be a little more grave under the circumstances. Yeah, well, this is the third time after all. It's scary what a girl can get used to, don't you think? Frankly, the way your mind works is a whole heck of a lot scarier to me. So what happened this time? Who shot you? I don't know. What? I'd like to know myself. Who could have done it? Who shot me? What are you asking me for? Oh boy. Guess I'll just have to go find out for myself. Okay, you just go do that. Hurry along now. I get the distinct impression I'm being used here. Okay, looks like it's time to go back. Back to four minutes before your death. I hope she doesn't think that she can just die carelessly now. This isn't a thing to... Lynn, you don't want to try to die. Imagine if she went in a war zone and began dying over and over. It would take... Like, every few seconds she's dying. That would take so much of Cecil's time. How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? I once thought the truth could be discovered in darkness. Maybe it was just that time wasn't right. Really, you're sliding down banisters at your age? He hung up! That's the truth behind our locked room murder? So the murder was a me 
the murderer was a mechanical machine. Murderer machine? When I came into the room, it was pitch black, so I turned on the light. That must have been what set it off. The murder machine, I mean. Can you please stop repeating the words murder machine? That old pigeon guy must have made it. But why? What could be the meaning behind this weird room? Anyway, uh, you'll have to find some way to stop that creepy machine. Once Cupid fires his arrow, it's all over. Or you could have gotten out of the way. I mean, that pistol was pointed right at you. I mean, I was rather in awe of what it was doing too, but... You know what? I'm just gonna save again. Can't save too often, after all. Well, first of all, what can we move to? So there's a box outside. That might be the control panel for the dumbwaiter. Oh, darn, we can't quite reach anything yet. So we won't be able to move until Lynn gets into this room. You know what, Sissel? I think this death might be easier to prevent than the others. Why is that? You know, because the murderer is mechanical. She has a point. I can't manipulate living creatures, but I can manipulate this machine. Now I just gotta figure out how to stop it. It's a Rube, it's a Rube Goldberg style device, so it shouldn't be too difficult. When the four minutes ago me turns on the light, that's when the murder machine is set in motion, apparently. Looks like the key to solving this one is understanding this Rube Goldberg machine. See, exactly. Rube Goldberg was a great cartoonist. One of the classic, one of the cartoonists of, of our, can of, you know, of the, of the American comic canon. People, I think, don't remember that he was a cartoonist. I feel like people think of him more as a... Well, they remember Rube Goldberg machines, but not that they were cartoons that he drew. Okay, here we go. Or not. Well, from this lamp, we'll probably be able to get into whatever that box outside is. Oh, Pigeon Man, I didn't have you out for a killer. Here we go. Oh, it's just a telephone? Yeah, this isn't terribly helpful to us, is it? We'll stick in the lantern for now. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, the lantern stays there. How did you manage to cram yourself into that tiny elevator? I've always liked small, cramped places. Whenever I see a little hole or crevice, I always feel like crawling in. The place I feel most at home is that space between my bed and the wall. Yeah, I guess I can understand that. Ah, we're birds of a feather! We should get together and talk about it sometime. Wish I had the chance. Lynn, I wish I would have ever had the chance. Might be interesting to see who's calling. Well, Pigeon Man? This is one where we're gonna prevent it in like the last few seconds. Oh, um, is this the superintendent? Oh wait, I think we already knew who was calling. I'm so glad, I, I thought I was all alone. Why would I go up there? I, I don't think I need to. Actually, I might regret this. It might have been my only way out of here. And if that's the case, well, that's the good thing about traveling through time, isn't it? Lynn, what exactly did you intend to find down here? Did you think this weird pigeon man might have, I don't know, a collection of birds? And if so, why do you care? Well, I don't know what this secret case you're working on is. And I don't pretend to understand it. So... Maybe this guy's actually a key to it. I mean, a lot has gone on in this junkyard, so maybe this superintendent is aware of some kind of seedy business that's been going on here. After all, if dark things are going to transpire, they might as well transpire in a place like a junkyard where the public will be unaware of them. And look at all that stuff. There's like glass Matryoshka dolls. Anyway, I better focus on on going back upstairs. I tell you what, you're just the worst cop ever. Well, 
I don't know about that. But he's not a good cop. He's got a good heart, but as I said, I don't know. Maybe he's more cut out to be a waiter or something. It just goes to show that there's complex circuitry even in a building as small as this one. Hmm. How are we going to get down to that engine, though? That's the big mystery right now. Well, we know that this this is going to blow in a second and um, burn this guy. It's all over. It's all over for me. Lin, sweet, cute Lin, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away from me. And then those detectives, matching bookends, blue and green, yelled at me. And then the old man with the dirty blue dove on his head completely ignored me. No, it's a dove. If only somebody would give me a kind word right about now. You want to give him a kind word, Miss Bright as the Sun? Um, let's see. Hang in there! That's all you've got? I'd like to see you do better! This is not what I meant to do. It's all over. It's all over for me. Lin, sweet, cute Lin, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away on me. And then the old man... Oh, man. This fellow seems to be almost losing his mind. All I wanted was for somebody to give me a kind word. Instead, what did I get? Scalding steam from the kettle. You want to give him a kind word, Miss Bright as the Sun? Is she just going to do the same thing? Chin up! You're just having a bad day! That's not a whole heck of a lot better than a scalding burn. I'd like to see you do better! Well... The issue is, I don't know how this would possibly have helped us. Like, if we had closed the... Well... It's probably too late now to do anything anyway. How are things transpiring downstairs? Gosh, why'd I have to leave the stepladder over there? Well, let's try this again. And this time, he won't get burned. Maybe he'll interpret the fact that that kettle closed as it being itself a kind word. And you might say, well, hold on, mackerel phones. How is he going to know that he would have gotten burned? Because he'll hear the kettle and he'll think, well, wasn't that open just a second ago? And maybe he'll think it's just some small kind of, you know, a minor miracle that that he's able to to not get burned when he sees it was shut. He's like, yeah, you know, my day could be worse. I could have gotten scalded by the steam in this kettle. But hold on. It wouldn't be spouting out like that if it were... In, unless it w were... You know, boiling and going off... You know, screaming in pain as tea kettles do. I believe the King of All Cosmos described it to me thus when I, and you know, years ago in like We Love Katamari or something, and that f uh, description stuck with me ever since. Also, Lynn, I really sympathize with liking to be in like cramped spaces. I totally get it. Now, for me, the space between the wall and the bed isn't that comfortable, though, because it tends to not be a place that's vacuumed, so there are dead spiders there. I prefer not to hang out with dead spiders, or dead things in general. At least, that's my opinion of the matter. Now, obviously, I'm making an exception for Sissel, but, he's, like, I don't like hanging out with corpses. Ghosts are fine. You know, they're pretty chill.
He's still in the depths of despair. Hate to imagine how much worse he would have gotten if he goes into the basement and finds Lynn dead. And then the kettle nearly scared me to death. My life is in complete shambles! That's gratitude for you! We were just trying to warn him with a kettle whistle! Would he have preferred getting scalded by the steam? Well, at least his fate was changed a bit. That's good anyway. That counts as changing fate. Well, whatever. Yeah, I see. We can't do anything right now because the power is off. Oh, but speak of the devil. And the electricity comes. No, there's still nothing we can do to stop this. Come on, come on! There it goes! The murder machine has started! And if the whole thing plays out, that gun on the wall will go off. But before that happens, it's up to me to use my ghost tricks. There must be some way to disrupt this domino effect. Yeah, there are like a million ways. You just have to find it. Here goes. Um, so there we are. Oh, here. We have a toolbox and this hook. And there's the ball, and it's falling. Did we just break the machine? Probably not. I mean, this is like a really... Wait, hold on, we're all, it's already over there? No! Well darn. Lynn, I swear, the key to this murder machine is that cheeky little Cupid who fires the arrow. But wait a minute, that swinging shovel. I wonder if that can be used as a weapon somehow against our Mr. Cupid. You know, a pair of wire cutters Clip that string that the uh, wrapped gift is attached to, and we're... Or it's a box, I suppose. It's not being given to anyone. The only gift here is murder. And I hope you don't consider death a, a thing that you want to have happen to you. If you do, I mean, I guess you're a religious person. Because after all, death is supposed to be so much better than being alive, according to... Here we go. Toy cake. The balance toy. And what is this thing down here? Just a door. So what does this thing even do anyway? Oh, I know this toy. Uh, the wheel spins around and moves down the pole. Hey, look! There's a thread attached to it. If it loops around the clock and is tied to the... It loops around the clock and is tied to the frame the gun's in. And it seems to be connected to our fiery Mr. Cupid as well. This toy seems to be the heart of the entire mechanism. But inertia is surprisingly powerful. I can't stop it once it's set into motion. Okay, so... I see what we need to do. We need to fling the ball into it somehow. Oh. There we go! What just happened? Looks like your future just got a whole lot rosier. Your death has been erased, again. I, uh, thank you. You kept your promise, didn't you, Sissel? My promise? You said I'd see you again if I died. I don't remember making any promises. It's all for my own benefit anyway. What could this room be all about? Hmm, I can't imagine. Those things that went off at the end, those were party poppers, weren't they? Party poppers? I have no recollection of what they are, but that's no surprise. The party poppers, the gun going off, it seems familiar somehow. 
I'll leave that part of the puzzle to you. I have my own puzzle to figure out. Well, shall we go back now? Back to your new present. Sissel? Are you there? Lynn is talking to me? If you're there, could you say something? If you're not there... I guess I'm just a weird girl who talks to herself. Well, you are kind of a weird girl whether you talk to yourself or not. Well, oh, let's talk to her. You are here! I knew it! I just had that feeling. Shame on you for stepping foot into a girl's head uninvited. Wait a minute. Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have feet bit. It's just a figure of speech. Hey, did I say anything? There, that tone! It's that tone of yours that makes me mad. So, did you have something particular you wanted to say to me? I just thought I'd share some information with you. I'm investigating a case right now. A murder case. And I'm doing it alone. A murder case all by yourself? Yes, well, that's because the case was closed a long time ago. The culprit is already behind bars, forgotten by the world. So, why are you looking into it then? Because I think the person's innocent, that's why! There's something strange behind the case. Some... Big mystery. I firmly believe that. So anyway, I finally have my memory back. I'm not at liberty to tell you about the case, but if there's anything else you want to know, I'll try to answer what I can. I guess it's just the principle of the thing that doesn't let her talk, even though no one could possibly catch her. Some people are like that. Lynn is my only lead. I would like to ask her about a few things. You have your life and your memory back now. So let me ask you again. Who shot me tonight? Yeah, I thought that might be the first thing on your mind. What else would it be? There's a good chance I was shot while I was with you after all. I'm afraid... My memory just isn't clear on that part. Not clear? I have met with you tonight, and then you fell down right in front of me. I think I remember seeing that part. I'm pretty sure you were shot. Maybe from somewhere far away. So you didn't see the culprit? I'm sorry. I wish I could be of more help. Well, I assume the culprit was that guy we killed with the wrecking ball. But I know I wasn't the one who shot you. Your colleagues seem to think you're a suspect, though. I wanted the information you had for me, so why would I shoot you before I got it? Information, huh? I wonder what info I had for. So I had some important information that you wanted, huh? That's right. You called the station yesterday, and you asked to talk to me. You told me you had an important lead on the case I was working on. Important lead, huh? You said you wanted to meet me and talk to me directly, tonight at the junkyard. And you fell for it, even given how fishy it sounds. You're the last person I want to hear that from, you know. But I just couldn't let it go no matter how shady it seemed. That's because I'm running out of time. Hey, that's right. You said something was going down tonight. Doesn't that something have to do with the case you're working on? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. Oh boy. But I guess I understand. Maybe it's the execution of that guy she calls in prison. By the way, I see you have a little roommate. Camila? How do you know about her? There was a tiny incident at your apartment a little while ago. An incident? What kind of incident? Well, didn't you already talk to her about this on the phone? What happened? Is Camila all right? 
She's fine thanks to her loyal little friend, Missile. Although I did have a little trouble bringing him back to life. Oh my! What in the world is going on? Why would anybody want to hurt Camila and Missile? You're being targeted by a certain organization. What? I saw them. The people who were calling you their target. So, I'm a suspect and a target? Could this night possibly get any worse? It does sound pretty rough. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Huh? You know what they say, when it rains it pours. Isn't it time you admitted you need me, need my powers? I'm sorry. I can't cooperate with you. Yes, you saved my life tonight. I'm completely grateful for that. But as a detective, I still can't trust you. That's too bad. So what are you gonna do now? Run, I guess. They'll catch me again if I don't get out of here. And I have to get to the restaurant. I'm worried about Camila. Oh yeah. What was it? The chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? What about you, Sissel? What are you going to do? I don't know to tell you the truth. You're my only lead. If you leave... I just realized. You and I are in the same boat. We're both looking for answers tonight, and neither one of us has anybody to help us. That about sums it up. Hey, even if you can't cooperate with me, how about if we just agree to use each other? That's not a bad idea. You're on. But, can I ask you to do me a favor, a uh, favor for me first? What's that? I need you to sneak into a certain place for me. A prison, to be exact. Prison? That's the place I was calling from the office upstairs. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Work schedule? For a prisoner? Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. Each prisoner's schedule is written for the next day on a small blackboard in his cell. So, just go check out a certain prisoner's blackboard, huh? Okay. His prisoner number is D99. If you do that for me, I'll cooperate with you. Okay, you're on. Okay, see you later. See ya. But don't die again if you can help it. Looks like I hold the key to the case Lynn is investigating, and she holds the key to solving the mystery of me. So, we've started up a strange relationship of cooperation. Lynn gave me an assignment. My task is to go check out tomorrow's work schedule for Prisoner D99. I'd better get to the prison. Lost memories of self, a forgotten murder case, a dead guy and a detective join forces to find out the truth behind them both. The detective assigned the dead guy a task, to sneak into the prison and find out a certain prisoner's schedule for tomorrow. What should I care? I don't have a schedule for tomorrow. That's how I'm feeling about it at the moment. I wonder what Dove Man's gonna think when he goes down here and sees that his special office has been infiltrated. 
Wonder how that detective who keeps dying is doing. Hope she's still alive. I bet she's pretty pleased with herself, keeping so much of the Reaper's attention focused on her. That little lady is waiting for her at the chicken kitchen. After I take care of this assignment, I'd better head there too. So that's the importance of the chicken kitchen, huh? I suppose, well, I, I remember that in the Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, that uh, death is presented as sort of like an overworked old man, which I thought was pretty interesting. It's all over. It's all over for me. Lynn. Sweet, cute Lynn, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away on me. And then those detectives, matching bookends blue and green, yelled at me. Huh. Forget about all that. Now you listen to me, kid. Yes, sir? Your bright as the sun Lynn probably doesn't even know you exist. And those detectives will probably yell at you your whole life. Never mind fretting about every little setback. Enjoy your life! Get what you can out of it. Mister, would you mind just leaving me alone? Yeah, you know, he's kind of an, a, a seedy, seedy guy anyway. We'll be on our way to, uh, suppose this room. It's the closest thing we have to the prison, the guard's room. Wonder if Bailey's still there, being as dumb as Andy. He's not as dumb as Andy. Let's, let's be honest here. So how are the preparations coming along? I think they're taking care of them right now. Yeah, man, I'm not looking forward to this. That kind of surprises me coming from you. I didn't know you thought about such things. By the way, that was just me being sarcastic, just in case you didn't catch that. Two more hours, and then it's time. I guess we should just get back to work. Yeah, I guess you're right. The atmosphere sure seems tense. I guess I'll just get back to my work as well. Yeah, I'm glad we got this flashback. It's like a lot of anime will have flashbacks to stuff that happened earlier in the episode. Maybe it's to save, uh, save on the budget. Here, it's probably just in case you had taken a break. Alrighty then. How do I get to these cells? I'd better try to get some information here first. You know, sometimes people say if the wall could talk, what stories it could tell? Well, here the wall can talk. No, oh, you're gonna throw it out again, aren't you? Yeah, probably. You gonna play with the paper? Hey, Bailey! Try pinning up your memos a little better next time. Let me see this thing. Inspection, prisoner C-74. Oh, it's almost time for that. I'd better prepare. Prisoner C-74, huh? What did that big whale do, anyway? You don't know? About the Metro Police Department siege case? Metro who what? C-74 barricaded himself into the Metro Police Department and took siege of the place. He even pointed a huge flamethrower at the Chief Commissioner. Why the heck did he do all that? That's what the detectives who surrounded him asked too. What are your demands, they asked. And? Guy looked confused, thought about it for a while, and said, Bring me five servings of curry and rice on the double. Curry and rice? That's it? Unfortunately, no. After he was done eating, he torched the commissioner's office with the flamethrower. Torched it good. Important documents and the commissioner's mustache were destroyed by the flames. What the heck did he do all that for? Because the curry was too spicy, he said. Huh? It was too spicy and I just lost it, he said. Seriously? The case sent shockwaves throughout the country. But it doesn't make any sense! In the first place, how did a huge arm guy make it all the way to the commissioner's office alone? It's a complete mystery. 
What? Well, why don't they just ask C-74 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently, it's all a matter of national secrecy. Huh. Yeah, you know, Bailey, contrary to what I said, you're not stupid at all. You're a little... You have your quirks, but... Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? Now, let's see what's on this duty memo. I hate to inconvenience Bailey like this. He doesn't deserve it. But... What must be done, must be done. Hey, Bailey. What's the matter? You can't even pin up a memo properly? Let me read this thing. Take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. You already told me that earlier. C-38, huh? What did that punk do, anyway? You never heard of the story? About the secret rendezvous case? Secret who what? C-38 was a singer in a band. His group was playing a concert that was being broadcast all over the country live. And right in the middle of their concert, there was a huge incident. A huge incident? But was it a murder or something? In a way, it was even worse than a murder, because it had to do with national secrets. Huh? National Secrets? A rock band? I'm lost. The song they were doing was called Secret Rendezvous. But the lyrics C-38 was singing were completely different from usual. So, how is that a huge incident? Because the new lyrics exposed all of the nation's dark, seamy secrets. Budget misappropriations, foreign economic strategies, illicit dealings, everything. He was caught red-handed in the act of leaking national secrets. Seriously? The case sent shockwaves throughout the country. But it doesn't make any sense. In the first place, how would a rock singer know any top secret information? It's a complete mystery. What? Why don't they just ask C-38 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently, it's all a matter of national secrecy. Hmph. <laughs> Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? Huh. Yeah, we can't get to these other monitors from here. So this is just, yeah, it's just a bunch of, uh, prison cells. Well, maybe this is going to be one about D99. I mean, it sounds like this might be a particular... Well, I mean, yeah, this does seem like some uh, kind of high-security prison. I see that here they caught the WikiLeaks guy, and he had the audacity to do it in a rock concert. Well, Memo... Away you go. Hey, Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Let me see this thing. Bring dinner to prisoner D99. The chief is preparing it, right? Oh, the chef. Big difference. The chef is preparing it for him right now. Oh, how fancy. D99, eh? Even I know about this one. Yeah? Such a sad case. Hard for us, too. He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member. It's just awful. Why in the world did he do it? Why would he do something like that, of all people? The motive, everything, all a complete mystery. It's just ridiculous. Does it make sense that he would do anything like that? I don't know the details, but apparently, this case is a matter of national secrecy as well. I don't get it! None of it makes any sense! You do know what kind of a prison this is, don't you? It's a special prison, built just for these kinds of special cases. 
that D99, who knows what he's thinking or hiding behind that beard of his. Bailey, I'm sure he knows what kind of prison this is. Although this is the sort of social obtuseness that I would expect from Bailey. Rather than just stupidity, you know, he's clearly pretty smart. I don't like any of it. I knew I couldn't take my job seriously without it getting to me. So the prisoner I'm looking for, D99, was convicted of murder, eh? And he apparently has a beard. Ah! Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? It's time. Yeah, this is, uh... They have a pretty loose dress policy, dress code here at the prison, don't they? Oh, he made a stack of cards. There, it's done. Well, unfortunately, the only way to get over there is through the memo. We're probably gonna knock over that stack of cards and break the wine glass, aren't we? Hey, Bailey! Would you quit sending these memos over here? No! Huh? Not until I figure out how you always know the exact instant a memo starts falling. Not until I solve that mystery! Ah! Next time! I will find the answer next time! Guess it's time to try and find a new path. Well, this, I guess. Maybe it's one of those prisons where, like, I mean, it can probably, like, overhear the, uh, what exactly they're, you know, saying, right? Like, on the phone? Or not? Well, how are we gonna get over there? So there's the WikiLeaks, man. But all, the issue is, all we can do is let the memo loose. There's no other, well, is there? No, there's nothing we can do with the crumpled up note. Well, while we're, if only we could, you know, ghost right now, we would get over there fine. Now they're just going to talk about how, you know, he needs to figure out how he... Oh, here we go. Darn it. Well... Now they're going to discuss the whole, you know, mystery thing. Bailey, I don't think you're going to figure this out, this kind of office mystery. Office time, mystery time. You didn't need to find a new path at all. I don't know what you're talking about, Sissel. This path got you over here just fine. Well, let's get this guy in trouble with his boss again. Ah! Just the kind of excitement I need to wake me up. Well, I told you, it's only for emergencies. Don't play with it. And I told you it wasn't me. You know, I thought this work would be a lot more exciting. Sometimes I don't know which is my real job. Going on rounds or building houses out of cards. Well, you better know. And you ought to know that I'm just kidding. Ugh. You know, I have to say, we're pretty far along here, and I still really have no idea... <laughs> it's a goblet. And I still really have no idea... Well, in a word... What's going on here. I feel like we're no closer than we were before. 
to having an answer. I'm guessing that's the kid they were talking about. The one who sang the National Secrets. He's a prisoner. He must have come from the cells. Yeah, you know what? The hairspray sales in this city must be off the charts. Even the prisoners use tons of it. Here we go. Oh darn, we can't get to the phone is the problem. So, this is the thing that was making that horrible noise a second ago. I guess it's a way for this spiky-haired youth to express himself. Sentiments like, I'm hungry, or I'm thirsty, maybe. Something primitive like that, I bet. Peace out! I'm done. All right, C-38, back to your cell. Hey, Guardman, how about giving me a little space? That crazy walk of yours is dangerous, man. A proper walk for a properly led life. Now let's go. Yo, no lectures, man. I walk my own path, my own way, to my own music. Is that what they call it nowadays? This is a very liberal prison. Maybe we're somewhere in, like, Scandinavia. Nah, their prisons would be nicer. So I finally made it to the cells. Now to find prisoner D-99 and check out his work schedule for tomorrow. What could Lin possibly want with that information? I can take another second in this stinking pit! Looks like the guard man is gone! Oh, this waiting's wiping me out! Hope this one will finally do it! Go, go, go! Is he flushing messages down the toilet or something? Come on, Sausage Head! Sausage Head? That could describe Sissel, honestly. Hmm. This prisoner obviously isn't the one I'm looking for. Prisoner D99 has a beard. There's one of those little blackboards Lynn said would be in the cells. Maybe I should check out Spikey's schedule for tomorrow. But there's no writing on the blackboard. So this is one of those little blackboards Lin mentioned. Let me just give it a little read. Tonight, I lost a lot of things. My life, my memory. But there's a certain skill I've apparently lost too. I can't read! I can see that there's some kind of writing on the blackboard. But I've absolutely no idea what it means! If I can't read Prisoner D-99's work schedule for tomorrow, what do I do now? Things just got a lot more difficult. This telephone looks like it's an internal line only. It doesn't call outside the prison. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other phones within the building that I've already possessed. Well, that's good. It can get us, you know, back to the line we need to get outside. Oh, darn. Can I get to it from the phone? Yes. No, oh, this is an empty cell. Yeah, it's a bunch of bunk, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we can't flush the toilet. But what are, what's up with these, though? There's a pad of notepapers hanging on the wall. 
There is a red zero drawn on each one. I think it's some kind of letter or symbol, but I don't recall what it means. Well, he remembers zero, then. Or he might mean there's, only, there's some kind of circle drawn on each one. Yeah, we can't do anything with it. Okay. Yeah, I can't do anything with his guitar. But we can play the drums. Let's startle this guy. I can tell you from my experience that it is pretty horrible when you have uh, people living next door to you who make this kind of noise all the time. It can be like a real nightmare. Yeah, we're not going to get anything from this. Well, let's press the emergency button and get some more people fired. They won't get fired, they're probably just getting in big trouble. Although I have a feeling by the end of the evening, we're going to press this so many times that somebody's going to lose their job. Hmm. An emergency button. An emergency. In a prison. That's gotta be a pretty bad situation. I'll just give it a little try. I caused quite an uproar, I guess. And I bet each prisoner reacts differently to the alarm. Might be fun to watch. Let's see. If I want to change my view, I can slide this. Yes. Maybe their behavior will give me a clue about my next step. Where's D99? There's no one over there. This is a big area. Is that D99? No. There's an underground tunnel one of them's been digging. How's, how are any of these people even reacting, though? Like, they're not. Well, here. I mean, aren't they kind of curious about who flipped the alarm? I mean, you'd think they would be. All clear. So if I sound the alarm, it gets people moving, eh? Maybe I can use their movements to get around myself. That way I can get an idea of what's going on in each cell. Well, yeah, you just said that. Well... Hate to do it, but, uh... Oh, we can possess the, uh... Oh, gosh, we came too late, though. Well, I guess of course we can. We can possess the notepads, can't we? So of course we could possess them when he throws them into the, uh... Into the toilets, too. But is he gonna do it again? I mean, look at, look at him! He's like a Dr. Seuss character, those stripes and his pointy shoes and stuff. You know what, I think this guy is just insane. Although, I mean, I don't know, he's still probably not the weirdest person we've found so far. Yeah, this, they're gonna be heads rolling over this. Here we go. Right down the pipes. But what exactly is the... Ooh! Oh, I see. So they're working on an escape plan. Well, this guy clearly is an R-man. He's clearly not D-99. By the looks of him, this must be the curry lover from the police department siege case. But never mind that. Where did he just come from? What's going on in this cell? 
Anyway, there's a little blackboard here, too. Just to be safe. Maybe I'd better check the curry lover's schedule for tomorrow, too. Well, you won't be able to read it. So what I want to know is, how does he, like... So he's trying to dig a his way out of here, like, uh, what's his name? Emilio from The Breakout. But, uh, what exactly... How would he use that toilet? I mean, I guess he takes the hook out when he needs to, say, poop or something. And this is his signal to get started again, isn't it? We're gonna get the same result here, right? I still can't read. But I better go check out Prisoner D99's cell anyway. Maybe I can find some kind of information that might help Lin. Besides, I want to see what this Prisoner Lin is investigating looks like. I mean, he can't be uglier than this guy. Oh, darn. What happens if we got into the thing in the pipe again? Oh, I, nothing, because it gets caught there. Oh, I see what we can do. Maybe? Yeah, this... Does, he doesn't strike me quite as prisoner material, if I may say so. Look at him just, like, sort of flopping around. I, he's really the last guy I'd expect to be burrowing a hole. Although he does sort of wriggle around like a worm. What is this guy doing? Maybe he misses curry so much he's trying to eat the dirt instead. Yeah, that's probably it. Or I could be wrong. In any case, I think there was a phrase that describes just this kind of situation. Oh yeah, I know what it is. Outlook not so good. This path doesn't lead anywhere. I think I'd better try to find another one. Same thing here. Looks like this is just an internal phone too. Doesn't call outside. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other f yeah, I, I get it. But it's a good, like, you know, good thing to have around. Hmm. This might be a f prudent time to save. The mystery of me. So this generates the power, huh? How can we manipulate the power supply, though? Looks like some kind of control panel. I think I can manipulate it. I think it must already be on, and I can't turn it off. Guess there's no need to fool around with it. I guess you're wrong about manipulating it then, huh? Well, what just happens if we move this? Oh. Is everything all set? They said they're still getting ready. We haven't had one of these things in a long time. Yeah, they said they had to clear away the dust and do some maintenance. Hey, what do you think about it? I don't think we should talk about it now. I just hope nothing goes wrong. They must be twins, or triplets since I've seen a few of these guys around here. Well? Whenever I see a lever, I just feel like I have to try it out for some reason. But when nothing happens, it just really makes me mad for some reason. Looks like I got all excited over nothing. Yeah, I know how that feels. Well, so there are no leads right now is the point, but... So there's the... Wait, no, that's not the curry man. Looks like he's painting a... 
Cephalic Cat? And, well, oh, there's the Curry Man. So yeah, it clearly wherever the bearded fellow is, he's not here. Actually, I don't know. That could very well be the bearded guy. We really don't know anything about him. Well, I don't see any way to get down there that doesn't involve pressing this. At this point, they're probably wondering what in the world is going on. Like, people keep... Like, they keep being these... Actually... Yeah. I'm hoping I can, like, attach to their keys or something. Darn, I can't. Although, we can see what happens elsewhere when we, you know... Use this. So, let's see what's going on in special detention. When this alarm goes off. Anything? No, surprisingly not. The alarm, for some reason, only goes off in, like, some of this base. Like, why would... Surely all the prisoners would be on high alert. You okay, Bailey? Bailey? Or, did you did you have a stroke? What's with you all of a sudden? What do you think of my quirky behavior? Surprised? Huh? You seem bored, so I thought I'd wake you up. You can call that my gotcha move! What do you think? If a normal person pulled a move like that, sure, I might be startled. But this is you we're talking about. Oh. Okay. Ah! How can you be so insensitive? I was only trying to open up communication between us. I, I thought... Hey, do your work, Bailey. What a team. Yeah, this room is basically completely useless. I mean, I'll wait a second. Maybe Bailey will write up a note and it can help us in some way. I swear, what are you trying to do? Curry favor with us? Is not gonna work. How do we get over to the spoon? Oh, I know what we need to do. We need to ring the bell. Like, again, so that he's down in the hole and he comes back up with his spoon. And he throws the spoon aside, and then we go, and we're gonna be- then Sissel is in the spoon. And from the spoon, he'll be able to get into the bearded man's cell, into d 99 cell. Really, I know these are federal criminals, but... There's something so dehumanizing about referring to them... Well... As... As numbers. Gosh, time is ticking as this big fat idiot is tumbling out of- Well, I don't know, maybe he's rather bright. But like, so this is some kind of weird domestic terrorist, right? Well, of course it's right, that's exactly what he is. Dang, dang nothing we can do with that right now. You know, you think they wouldn't need to ring the bell. Surely the alarm going off throughout the prison is enough for him to notice that something's amiss. Now, the bell is obviously good for times there aren't that alarm going off, but you wouldn't think it'd be necessary in this case, would you? No, you certainly wouldn't. Well, we're gonna let him get settled in. Let him flop around down there like some kind of giant caterpillar. Yeah, he's digging through the dirt, though, so he's more of a... Some other sort of insect larva. One of the kind that burrows and buries itself in the soil to eat decaying stuff. You human worm. Anyway. Maybe I shouldn't be judging him. I don't, I don't know you. But you are a federal prisoner and almost murdered somebody over curry, so... Yeah...
Darn, we can't get to the spoon quite yet. Still can't. Here we go. Just what I needed. Another internal phone, of course. Same thing here. Looks like this is just an internal phone, too. Well, what do you expect? I mean, this is in the middle of this cell block. Looks like the curry lover comes back when he hears his bell. Can't make heads or tails out of his behavior once he gets back, though. But this prisoner isn't the one I'm looking for. I'll just chalk this guy up to, it takes all kinds. Better try and find, yeah, what? Why are you talking like this? I already have done it. We've, we're in his cell now. You know, it's like a walrus that he drew. What a strange cell. And the prisoner inside it, he seems to be enjoying himself. This is the last cell in this area. So that means that this man humming to himself must be prisoner D-99. According to what the guard said... D-99, huh? Even I know about this one. Yeah? He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member. What in the world really happened? And why is Lin so concerned about this prisoner? I don't know the answers, and I guess there's no need for me to know. I have only one objective, and that's to find out what this painter's work schedule is for tomorrow. Photos, huh? Wonder if these are of his family. This one looks like a young woman holding a baby. Their faces have been blotted out with black paint. Did he do it out of hatred or some other emotion? Thankfully, that's not something I need to know right now. Maybe he's ashamed to look at them. Like, because he shot her? Oh, a newspaper article. A newspaper article's been cut out and framed. Unfortunately, I can't read it. It's probably about D-99's case. Man murders wife or something like that. There's a picture of the alleged culprit in the article. Yup, it's the prisoner, all right. How do you know it's the culprit if you can't read it, though? So, the work schedule for tomorrow of prisoner D-99. The information Lynn's looking for should be written on this blackboard. Unfortunately, I have lost the ability to read. But here I am anyway. The least I can do is take a look. Huh? What could this mean? There's nothing written on the board at all! I think something was written on the blackboard of the other prisoners. But this prisoner, this board, it's, it's as clean and blank as the day it was hung there. So I have the answer Lynn was looking for. Tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D-99 is... nothing. Would this information mean anything to her? It's not up to me to know or care. That's how I feel at the moment, anyway. Yeah, I guess they are going to execute him tomorrow. I suppose he's working on his last painting right now. Quite a feast tonight, I see. Uh, and I'm absolutely crazy about this chicken. It's too bad it's all cold and hard, though. I'd say it's been about two hours since it was cooked, judging from the way it feels. D-99? I know it's kind of pointless to ask now, but just the same, I still want to know. Why did you do it? 
I agree. It's pointless to ask now. My case is colder than this chicken and has been forgotten by everybody. Myself included. Detective Jowd. Now then. Let me eat in peace before it gets too cold to cut. There's one more thing I've been wondering for a long time. What's that? Who is the man in that painting? Oh, this? Well, being in prison like this, you start to forget faces, you know? So I paint the faces that I don't want to forget. And this is the last of those faces. Now, could you please leave me alone for a bit? Let a man eat in peace. Okay, sure. Sorry to bother you. What in the world? What in the world could this mean? Why is there a painting of me in this man's cell? Who exactly is this prisoner? The man whose case Lynn is investigating is painting a picture of me in his cell. I have to go see Lynn, fast, and not for her sake, for mine, to solve this mystery of me. I'm not surprised he's a big appetite, but... You know... Guess he, he knew Sissel from way back. He used to be a detective, but he shot his wife or was somehow framed for it. He reminds me kind of of Asgore. Big, long blonde hair and a big beard. Makes you think. You know, makes me think he might be innocent anyway. But that's a silly thing to base it on. I suppose they call him the Chin. This is headquarters. What's the status over there? Oh, Chief, it's you. Uh, they're making preparations now. No problem, sir. How much longer, then? One more hour, sir. I see. Carry on, then. Oh, one more thing. Inspector Cabanella wishes to speak to you. Evening! Cabanella here. How you boys doing? Inspector Cabanella! Fine, sir! You got another little call tonight, didn't you? From my baby. From Lynn? Uh, well, yes. Did my girl have anything interesting to say? Uh, not especially. She hung up almost immediately. I see. Next time she gives you a buzz, be sure to let me know right away. There's a good fella. Yes, sir. You try to cover it up, and I'm sure you'll regret it very much. Very much. Yes, sir. I'll call you right away, sir, immediately. Don't forget, she's a fugitive after all. Uh, yes, sir. Carry on, then. I might pop in a little later. Yes, sir. Looking forward to seeing you, sir. Inspector Cabanella seems to be looking for her, too. Y your Lynn, I mean. Inspector Cabanella? What would this special investigation unit want with Lynn? I don't know. Guess something happened that we don't know about. Tonight of all nights. Spectre Cabanella must be upset tonight, too. Weren't he and prisoner D-99, Detective Jowd, good friends? You sure about that? They were such good friends. How come Inspector Cabanella never came to visit him? He's the head of special investigation. He's a very busy man.
Well, what's wrong? Jode was my hero, you know. I wanted to be a detective because of him. But look at me! Rotten away in a place like this, and I can't even do anything to help Lynn. What am I doing with my life? The, this new side of you is kind of... endearing. Anyway, the, the thing to do is work at fixing what you can, little by little. Like, for example, your house of cards. It collapsed, you know. Uh, I think I sense a romance blooming. I guess that guy on the right, though. Maybe he... I mean, he said you're Lin. Is he Lin's, like, brother or something? Lin should be heading for the chicken kitchen now. But the call from police headquarters intrigues me, too. It's looking pretty obvious right now. That white-suited inspector suspects Lin. And she's being considered a fugitive. This is not good. Wonder if I should go check in on the chief and the inspector in white, too. Well, I feel like we should go see Lin first, and she's probably, you know, dead. Although I kind of am loathe to see that annoying, singing, chicken-nosed chef man. But hey. Although I don't know, any intel we could get about what uh, Cabanella is doing could be only helpful to Lin. The Chicken Kitchen. This is where that little lady and Lin are supposed to meet. But... I don't see either one of them here. I guess they haven't shown up yet. I can hear that guy. I don't know. I'm a little worried that maybe they're like... They didn't show up because they're dead. I mean, that's always possible, but um... You know what, forget it. Let's just go to that guy's office. He has a good voice, too. He's just... It's a waste on that man. Preparations seem to be going smoothly over at the prison, eh, Inspector Cabanella? We were just a little too late. So close, eh, Inspector? We still have a little time left, Chief. Not much, but some. We've had Point X surrounded all night. If he shows up, we nab him and we can still make it. By the way, what's going on with that other case? The junkyard murder. She did it, eh? No question about it. She's a bad little baby. Disappearing from the scene like that. Wonder where she ran off to play. What did he just say? She did it. Did I hear that right? I think they were talking about the culprit who killed me. N no way. Of course she didn't do it. She wouldn't be trying to shake you and see if you were alive if she, in like that desperate way, if she had killed you. Unless it were an accident because she is a rookie and seems a little too... I mean, talking about crime as fighting the bad guys is kind of naive. Yeah, not much in here. I just don't believe it. Why would she do a thing like that? Afraid I don't have the answers for you, Chief. I don't want to believe it any more than you do. And yet... After seeing this, Maybe we don't have any other choice but to believe, baby. Is that the security camera tape the investigation unit just delivered? I can't deny. It's some pretty solid evidence against her. Evidence. Nothing like it, baby. Why a murder case now, on such an important night? Tisk tisk. I think you have that wrong, Chief. I 
a murder case now for the very reason that it is such an important night. So he has some kind of evidence, huh? If they have like a clip of her shooting Cecil, that is some pretty conclusive evidence. I like how they're not even noticing or commenting on the whole, you know... Oh. Oh. But fine, let's see what this piece of evidence is. Huh? Let's see. The junkyard where I died had a security camera, and it captured the moment of my death perfectly. And what the tape showed me was the cruelest truth imaginable. I saw myself shot right before my own eyes by Lynn. There goes my only lead. I feel like I've died all over again. One thing sticks with me though. Lynn looked so surprised on that tape. What in the world did I tell her? The truth is the truth, no matter how many times you watch it, Inspector Cabanella. It wasn't me who played the tape just now, baby. Oh, by the way, Inspector Cabanella, there's something on that tape that troubles me. And what's that, Chief? I'm all ears. I had a look at all the photos of the crime scene as well, but... The place where the victim was shot and where the body was found is clearly different. Hey, he's right. That is strange. The hitman in black is the one who kicked me downstairs. But I changed his fate, so he should have been out of the picture. But there I am, down on the lower level. I have the answer to your mystery right here a few minutes after the murder took place. Wait, a cat was strong enough to move a whole human corpse? Is that a black cat? You got it, baby. A furry feline messed up our crime scene. And then the little cat culprit vanished into the night. Hmm. Looks like my destiny at being knocked downstairs is very hard to alter. What? Po well, um, this is point X. Come in, chief. The chief here, did he show up? Um, no sir, not yet, but... Idiot! I told you to stay off the radio unless it was important. B but this is important, sir. Somebody else showed up. Our rookie detective, Lynn. What? You see my baby over there, do you? I heard she was on the lam. Uh, what do you want me to do, chief? What do you say, Inspector? Detective. Get my baby away from Point X. 
do it now, man. And then hold on to her. Yes, sir. I'll go get her now, sir. What's the meaning of this? Why would Lin show up at Point X? It took the Special Investigation Unit six months to pinpoint that location. Dunno, Chief, but I'd say it wasn't a coincidence. Perhaps. W what happened? Detective, come in! Now what? What happened this time? Damn it! This calls for a telephone call to Point X. Allow me. So I take it Point X is not this chicken place. I gotta say, I'm surprised. I've never seen Cabanella perturbed before. Wait, it is the chicken place? What are you doing? Get your buns over here! Wh what did you say? Now I finally understand. I finally know what it's like. For our poor hungry customers who have their food deliveries delayed. Excuse me. But this is the chicken kitchen, is it not? What? Aren't I talking to the police? The police? Did something happen there you need assistance with? Something happened here, you ask? More like, there's nothing left here! I gotta go! Wait! Wait! What's going on? Something, that's what. Something is definitely going on. And that something is far from nothing, that's for certain. Thanks for the tea, Chief. I'll be on my way. You going to Point X? Point X, eh? Huh? I'll leave that to the boys. There's someplace else I gotta be. Inspector. Your being there isn't going to change anything. Why put yourself through it? I have a responsibility and I'm gonna see it through to the end. Besides, it's not quite over yet. Right, that's true. Do what you must then. Prisoner D99's schedule for tomorrow was blank. It seems like forever ago that I found that out. And now my mind's even blanker than that blackboard was. Lin, my only lead and my partner, shot me. What did it all mean? I knew where I had to go to get my answers. The chicken kitchen, the point X the police have surrounded, and the place where something big just happened. But will Lynn be involved in this time when I find her there? I can't stand looking at it! You don't stop, I just might have to pound you! This, this is a glorious dance that's been passed down in my family for generations. When you don't know what else to do, dance, dance, dance. We call it the panic dance.